Yeah, I haven't doing I haven't been doing this kind of video logging now for a really long time. I just stopped for I don't even know for what reason. But I feel like there is a lot of value that you can get out of this, so it seems pretty dumb. I feel like I should probably do this at every day for some amount of time, even if it's only five minutes, this seems pretty useful. And it also seems it, it honestly it just seems one of these things that feels like if you don't do them then you really lose something. It's basically the most effective way in which you can force yourself to put something into language by talking to a camera. With that, but I mean it's like this is like definitely the easiest by far way that you can make yourself talk out loud whenever you want even when there are not other people around because talking to a camera still feels natural enough that you would do it. Also I noticed that I didn't use my good microphone to record any of this which is pretty terrible. I think it's especially terrible because this microphone is actually really nice because it takes like 10 seconds to set up. So I feel like there is probably a thing where when I write something down this would be a lot more there are lots there are lots of advantages that you don't get from doing this kind of camera conversation that you get from writing specifically it's a lot harder to remember when you write something then you have this text in front of you and as you write the text you refactor the text meaning I'm, I'm saying a lot of words right now and if I would write down the stream of thoughts that I'm having right now in words then it would be probably contain 75% less words but the words that it would contain would be more meaningful or at least something in that direction seems to be the case and that of course means if you compress this information and make it be so, sort of if you have less information that you need to look at, then you can look at it more easily. And right now I can't look at anything, right? Because, I mean, I can just write, run Whisper, which I, it doesn't make any sense that I'm not doing it, kind of. Okay, I guess it, I just thought I just, uh, oh wait, it's not just start working. I thought I broke Whisper, but now it works. Okay, yeah, it was easy to start. And now I have some approximation of this text in front of me where I can, look back on what I was saying and then remember which is a bit easier with text than with a video and though here we still have missing the parts at least in this interface that we add some structures you know if I had some headlines or had some other kind of tree structure thing like in LockSec then I can structure the p the information in a more easily accessible way such that i get information that i actually need uh, like quicker yeah i feel like probably lock sec or like yeah i feel like yeah, i'm saying it's kind of garbage because there's only six levels of heading and can't really zoom in like in a way that is actually good um and lock sec does that so like it feels like lock sec would probably be even better for this kind of thing especially because in LockSec we can even write everything down you know I can just like try it right now all right I got like, extremely distracted kind of now I changed my keyboard shortcuts to uh, be in sync with Obsidian and LockSec it's nice to again include a little time in the corner of the video then you can see how much I fucked up yeah, right. I am like a bit confused because I forgot already what we were talking about, except that the last thing we were talking about is that I wanted to test out if I can just sort of say all the important things that I'm saying. But okay, the idea is like I have like a script and I can do things like now start a dictation mode such that everything that I'm gonna say right now is gonna fit into whisper and when I now press a key meaning stop and I wait briefly it just inserts whatever I set as uh, text anywhere in my system wherever the cursor is right now 
And you know, this seems just kind of useful to do. Actually, each time when I was talking to some person, I was already basically using exactly this technique. I was each time when I was basically, yeah, I have like one program, which is just transcribing everything that I'm saying. And that's pretty useful in case I forget to record something to like, to like start even the recording, because like, it's like the, the whole point of like having the targeted recording, like I was, I'm trying to, ah, you know, now it comes back to when I remember what I was wanting to talk about. I wanted to like talk about the thing, right? Where we have text and text can be compressed down into, into some sort of representation of whatever you were thinking about. And that can be really useful because when you compress everything down that you thought about, then you can look it up much more easily. And if we have a lock sack here, then I can probably, like I can do like the thing where like, you know, I have, there's a bullet point and then I have some sub bullet point here and it's like some more stuff, but I can like, just like not actually show this. Uh, oh yeah, right. Okay. And looks like I do it like this, I guess. Yeah. And I can like hide it away and, and also um, unhide it. Like for example, there's a command, if I press like TO, then it's like toggle everything in the document, I guess. Oh yeah, this is like here. We have like, we have like down here, we have like actually a different document, but it's like, I don't even see that. So, um, yeah, so like, I guess the idea would be now to, if each time that I would do this kind of talking, I would just have this document open, like some document about the thing, like about the specific conversation and then writing down the points as I make them. Yeah, I feel like this is probably pretty helpful. I feel like it's also potentially useful for like noting down even meta stuff. Like I could note down, ah, I switched the topic at this point in time, like a timestamp, whatever. And then it's just cut the video based on this timestamp, not even looking at it. Like, you know, if I want to, if I don't care that much about quality, which I, do I care about the quality? I think I do not. I think the main benefit that I get out of this is not that the video is like the most useful thing when you watch it, but it's about how useful is it to even make the video? See, that would be now, I feel like a pretty good point to write down. So basically it's not the primary purpose of this document to be very good for other people to consume. Uh, and another thing that's like really good of, about here, of course, like I could write down, oh, what are now the next points that I want to talk about? It seems very useful. So like, I think I get a better idea now by doing this conversation. This is a conversation if only one person is talking. I guess it's a monologue more. Yeah, I should probably call it camera monologue. Um, yeah, so I think, I think I got a lot clearer now on how this can actually be useful and like be integrated with the existing methodologies that I'm already using because I was, the thing that I didn't use it last time, even though it seemed very promising is probably because I was confused. How can I even make use of this technique? Okay, so very briefly, I also did that only yesterday. Or like, yeah, okay, so that's, so the basic setup is basically um, that, like the basic setup that I was using now, basically since half a year, was like using Obsidian before I was using Emacs, but that was just taking a lot of time, even though Emacs has a lot of good features that Obsidian doesn't have at all. I mean, basically all of the things that I'm doing in locks, like you can just do it in a it makes org mode um, by default, all of these editing commands. And that's like one of the main things that's missing from Obsidian. Okay, but like, anyway, like the basic setup is you have like the Obsidian vault and then you write some Markdown documents in it about like, well, it can be about whatever, right? This is like really general workflows. Or like my workflow would be, I sit down and write about some ideas that I have and like uh, have some document that I sort of started start open new document and then write about what about what is this idea and then it's like ah what kinds of things 
do you want to think about to develop this idea? And then think about these things. And then you end up writing a document. And that writing is really useful for, like I couldn't basically do, like I would be really dumb if I couldn't write all of the things down, use Obsidian. And then like re-reference back, like I'm not even talking about backlinks or something, which is, but this is also very useful. And just talk about like, you write something, why you think about it, like this, co this piece of content that you just wrote in the last five minutes, why you think about it, you can look at the text, what was it that you th were thinking about? That's really useful. And then going back and say, like, wait, here I was confused. Let me refine this. And now then you can tweak everything and you can, uh, you have this object, which is the article and you can coerce it into a better and better form until it's at some point uh, just really good. And it's like just a random article, by the way, it's like actually not really important. Okay. And now what I was doing yesterday was like thinking how horrible the arc mode outline things are. I was like, hmm, maybe I can try to use Locksack again. I was trying to do that, but it was really horrible. And it was again really horrible because it took me one hour to even make it start. <laughs> crashing all the time trying to load all my obsidian files because it doesn't it just doesn't like it if you have like two files with the same file name even if they're in a different path then it just likes to crash um so i fixed that and now well i don't know if okay this the setup so far that i was thinking why is locksack potentially better is that in Locksec, you have all of these outlining functionalities and you have all of this hiding away and you can do things like uh, I can like click on this and now I'm like in the to-do tree. And all of this you can kind of do in Obsidian too with plugins and stuff, but it's, it's kind of weird. Like for example, you are like press like here and then like there's little indented here and actually if they're more indented than like half the document then they like, completely break and it's it's a bit weird. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe this also doesn't... Uh, I'll just try it. I can see this possibly working basically not only because obs the, the, uh, Locksec does something that's different, but it seems like generally just a good way to have like structure your reasoning across these different kinds of methodologies. Um, and what I mean specifically, okay, like be, pre, before I was talking about, I am writing this article about something. There's one kind of mi this bit misleading because when I say I'm writing an article, I mean, it's not, a, it's like an, an article sort of implies it's something that is published. I don't know. Like, okay, the difference I'm trying to get at is that you can write in order to understand, make yourself understand what's even going on. And writing is really helpful for that because it makes you like smarter, which I was talking about before a bit. But this kind of writing that's like exploratory is actually very different from the kind of writing you would need to do in order to, like it's different from the kind of writing that you would do if you're like, I write this article because it communicates something that people don't right now have as a model in their heads about AI alignment or whatever. And therefore I need to, because I have, think I have this kind of model, I need to write an article and communicate this article to these people because like, that would be good because now they have the better models in their, in their heads, like, which allows them to better react to the world, which then has some good consequences. That's, that's like, that only happens if the people actually like, really understand the models that you trying to give them at a sufficiently deep level. And if you're by giving them your exploratory writing, I, I feel like this uh, exploratory writing is like extremely undervalued. Like, like how often, unless wrong, let's say, how often do you see somebody post their sort of document that they produce like the artifacts of writing that they produced while they were producing this article. Normally people don't post this, but this seems like really useful. This is an entirely different topic. <laughs> but 
but this, this is like really interesting. Okay, I need to just very briefly say why. Basically, imagine as somebody who's really good at coming up with good ideas and then writing about them in a good way, then looking at the documents that they produced while producing sort of the final document, like the, the exploratory writing document, like if they're doing that, maybe they really have a different methodology, but if they're doing that, then that's giving you a lot more insight of how are they managing to come up with these good concepts and like what, like what are they, what are they doing? Like if you look at the final document, you don't know what they're doing. Like you can't like pick up, like you can like not take like mathematical theory of information. Wait, is it that? I don't know. It's called, I think a mathematical theory of communication. Yeah. You know, the cloud chain information theory explained in this paper. You can't like pick this up and then like understand exactly how he arrived at it. Well, actually I haven't read it yet. And therefore maybe you can do that because I don't know what the details are in the book, but based on other books that are like that, you know, like papers, like scientific communications, I would guess that they strip out basically all of the information that you would need in order to understand what the procedures are at the cognitive level that they perform in order to come up with these uh, concepts like that. Oh, like, like how the Claire Chen like understood that. Oh yeah, there, there's this thing. There's it's like a thing we, if we figure it out, it would be very good. Like I'm pretty confident that the, the Sadika would not talk in detail about that process. Also, it's like really difficult to actually talk about this process in like the same rigorous way. Oh, this is like so, such a sidetrack. But it's really difficult to like actually say like, this is how my reasoning works. This is what I did. This is very difficult. But what's really easy is like, look, here's some artifacts I generated while I was working on this. That's like almost no effort, basically. But it still gives you like, I mean, it gives you a lot of information, I think, about how the person would reason. You know, assuming it's like not, it's like you put in some sort of small amount of effort to like, making it sort of a bit presentable. So it's, you know, you need to say like, you need to give some context for what you were doing while you're producing these artifacts. Okay, that was uh, enough sidetrack. Oh yeah, so like, now I looked at my whisper transcription and I realized uh, what I was actually talking about. <laughs> Way faster than if I was watching the video, I think. So I was talking about how, how there are different kinds of writing. There are different methodologies as part of your entire workflow. For example, there's the methodology of, I open the text document and I write this document, this article in there and do stuff with it. And it's like one particular way you would go about this. Like, like, I, like I would go about this a particular way um, and it's not even like entirely clear to me how I do it, but there's clearly I'm doing something that I'm not actually completely aware of. And other people might be doing probably, probably something they're different. Like, uh, yeah. Um, but the idea now is maybe there is a different kinds of, maybe it can put in a bit more structure to it. Like for example, okay, here, I'm just going to describe, I guess, the idea. Here we have this tool, which is like LogSec, which is like kind of like the, uh, the, the kind of only thing, well, it's not the only thing, but like the main thing that it does is like, we have like this, this, this like bullet lists that we can collapse and like navigate to and they're all like linkable and can link to every sort of item in a bullet list like anywhere in the document I can also have different documents I can link to them like that's like that's like the entire structure of the documents that you have you have documents with these bullet lists in there and writing in these bullet lists is potentially very different from writing an article for example if we have like one thing that I could do is I could, I could write something in there and I can like have some sort of like content that I write and I'm, as I generate it, I can like easily organize it into these different, into the, into this list. It's like, ah, yeah, I talk about this stock, uh, this kind of thing. I just have like, oh, now I have these questions. Now I want to like, oh, let me think about, about this thing. Oh, what experience could you perform? Maybe I write like a longer thing about like, like a paragraph 
on like how would we do this and and this is all like this this feels very different right this is like i'm sort of like like it seems to be more suitable to the kind of thing where you're like i want to generate a lot of things i want to generate lots of like good ideas i don't even know what is the good idea yet so i want to like be very take all my stuff and put it into this thing put it into this form and and here because we have like the structure like we have this tree structure like basically looks like it's like yeah 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 you want to have yeah, this now put them in this tree and we can use this tree structure to organize what we do and then we can do things like oh wait you know you know actually uh wait i, I don't want to think about these questions yeah okay like oh, actually let, no, let's not think about that Let's think about this. This was maybe not that good. Uh, like this is, seems like really easy to do in Locksec, and you can also do an obsidian. But it's it's like yeah, you can do anything as an obsidian kind of. But like the important difference is like how do you use the features? Because normally when I write an obsidian, but like yeah, this is not specific to obsidian or Locksec, but it's more like. Uh, the methodology is like more general and the methodology that I'm talking about is like different and you could use whatever tool you use. Like the difference in methodology is like when I write like an article and that's how I would think about it in Obsidian, then it's like a linear document. You start reading it and then you like go down and it should make sense as you go down and read through it. And this is just you know, this doesn't really work because then you get into the situation where like, ah, I have like these, uh, these questions and it's like, hmm, um, how do I capture all of these ideas? Do I need to now like refactor them or put them like somewhere else? Uh, like, like, I mean, like in, in the, what I mean is like in a, in a, in a final article, you wouldn't like have like a random section sort of, that's not important. That's halfway done. That's just randomly popping up talking about the random thing that's not actually that that's not important maybe at all to the other, other things but it happens that you generated that as part of the generation procedure of generating the actual good content and yeah i'm so tired i think i can't really explain this very well right now i hope i got it across maybe a little bit yeah, so basically, there are two different kinds of modes in writing where we focus on different things. And in the degeneration, we don't want to focus on having the perfect document that you read from start to finish. But we want to do like random things like, oh, go away. And or like, add like a tag. Like, oh, that's, this is like some scrap notes that's like laying around there we can ignore. Or this is the important note that we want to come back to later. Yeah, okay. I think that's enough on the Locksec obsidian distinction. Now, the thing is, you notice that like one problem with writing is that it is really slow compared to speaking. And the main thing that I was now considering of maybe adding to this workflow that I have established since one day, but it feels like there is something there and this has been seeming like that for a while that I have been ignoring for too long of like how I was not factoring my workflow appropriately. And it feels like I can add like another kind of component to it that is different from stuff I was doing before that would be really useful. Like it probably is a, a starker difference than what I was describing with like Locksec and Obsidian. But the, because that's just about how do we write down our thoughts and how do we put them in, into the into document structure. That the document structure is really similar to Docsec and Obsidian. But now the idea is we have this tool to elicit cognition, which is, uh, I guess, called a camera monologue, where you just do what I'm doing right now. And it seems like you can maybe put this in front of the idea generation procedure. I mean, probably have noticed that when you talk to people, it's really useful for having ideas. And it's, in my experience, not only because the people give you good feedback. I, it very often happens to me that there is some person that doesn't sell me anything useful, or like, or like maybe it's uh, before they tell me anything useful, it's already really useful talking to them because 
when I talk to them, the main thing that I need to do, like there, I guess there are a couple of things. The first thing is that I need to force all of my thoughts into language. And that is some process that seems actually very beneficial. And I'm not quite sure why this is, but somehow, ah, ah, okay. I, I think I have a good analogy. If you write like a computer program, you know, you might, or, or it even generalizes beyond that. Um, it, it, there is the, the situation where you think you understood something, but you actually didn't, but you haven't realized that you didn't understand something. And if it's in programming, it might be something like, aha, I understood how eta expressions work in Lambda Calculus. And then you try to write down an eta rule application and then it's like wrong. Even though you thought you could just do it because it seems so easy. And then you're like, oh, I didn't understand it apparently. I just didn't realize that I didn't understand it. And now, and when you, when you program something, when you think, ah, I have understood this algorithm, let's say I know how to write it down. And then you sit down and force yourself to put your understanding into the actual code, then it's impossible to not notice when you are unable to translate your knowledge into the algorithm that works. Because like, if there is some missing, missing piece of understanding, then you will notice that by not being able to, but by getting stuck at some point in the process of developing this program. And this is relevant to this camera, doing the camera monologue, I think potentially, because there is a similar thing that happens when you take your conceptual understanding that you have in your brain and you force it into language to, that seems similar to what you do when you write down the program. Language has sort of rules and you can, it has, it's, it's, you can, if you think of in the conceptual space of the mind and everything can be sort of a bit kind of fuzzy and it can seem to make sense. But once you try to spell it out more explicitly, then you can notice where you get stuck, where you can't express some thought. And very often this can be because you actually didn't understand the thing that you thought you understood, which you predicted would enable you to do the thing, but you weren't. And I think this is a benefit you get by just doing camera monologue. You don't need the other person to respond to you, giving you lots of good feedback in order, like it's just about forcing yourself into language. And this is different also from, um, like you can, of course, like when you think you, have, you can have lots of language in your mind, but that's different, I think, because when you have it in your mind, it can be, it's, it's still a lot fuzzy and it intermingles with the concepts in a way that you really can't do when you're forced to write it out a piece of paper like it's the same right when, when i write something it's also forcing myself to put something into language which is why it is but also part of why writing is so useful i think and but to talk to camera is like i mean you know probably notice that when you write a chat with somebody it is a lot lower bandwidth because typing out the words is just a lot slower than speaking them out and potentially, yeah, uh, very speculatively, uh, speculatively, maybe there's even something going on there. Like I am saying something, I'm saying X, Y, Z, or like I, I'm, I'm talking about how, how fasting your things into language is, is good. Now, when you speak the, la the words out loud, maybe this is makes it easier to hold them in your memory because you just heard these words and it makes it sort of easier for some part of your brain to actually generate stuff. It, it, it seems like maybe something like that is true. It, at least it seems it, it's kind of very suspicious that when you talk to somebody about your ideas, that it seems to be extremely useful to just talk about your ideas and Maybe there is just something 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know how big this is, but it, I would be surprised if there's no effect at all about just like I'm saying things, they are flowing back into my ears. I can like, this has some sort of effect because like I sort of get myself as the my, my own input again. Maybe that makes it like easier to remember it because like it's like more there. Um, also, I'm using sort of different kinds of parts of the brain when I speak compared to when I think, probably. Maybe that's some of stimulating. Seems uh, plausible, but very speculative. But like, I guess I'm only trying to say, this seems very good to me, like anecdotally. I don't quite understand why, but it seems so good anecdotally that I would expect some sort of weird effects that you would normally like describe as weird are probably happening when you are just speaking out loud that we normally wouldn't notice that make it such that you can get a lot of cognitive benefit simply by speaking out loud, not even interacting with anybody. Like, and not interacting, like the camera is not saying anything back, right? Like it's like similar to talking like a, an audience that, I guess, I guess even, even further removed, the audience might clap, gives you some kind of interaction with the audience, but the camera doesn't really do anything. Okay, and that, that is one major thing where I think doing this camera thing gives you advantages and some of them are potentially different from what you get um, from writing and definitely the bandwidth. Like I think like okay, even if that's all like incorrect what I just said, except for the bandwidth thing that you can just speak so much faster than you can write, I think it's probably worth it for that reason alone to use this kind of technique. So there is a different benefit, I think, from doing the kind of camera thing, which is, I feel like, very different from when I write. Somehow when I'm doing the camera monologue, I feel like it is good to explain myself. Oh, also I just realized another thing um, that's really good. I think I already talked about it a bit. Like, you can observe how you explain things by watching your video and then see how you fail. Yeah, I talked about that. Um, yeah, and I think like somehow when I select the camera and I talk to the camera, then there is a sort of automatically I'm trying to make myself clearer. Like if I like I could also talk to myself. Actually, that's really hard to do. I should try, like it's it's really hard to talk to yourself because you feel so awkward for doing it, even if you're like completely not insane. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because if you weren't saying it probably wouldn't feel awkward or something like that. Anyway, um, it's, it's really easy to talk to yourself or like talk to camera. Um, then it, like you, then talking to yourself, talking to yourself, hard to talk to camera is actually, it's pretty easy, I think. Um, yeah, I feel like I still didn't get to the core of like with this explanation. I, I only want to say something like, and there's a camera, it's easy to kindle this desire of, I want to now explain myself well, even more than writing a text document. Um, maybe there's just something about something observing me. When I, when I write a text document, it's all one way. Like, it's sort of like, at no point am I really pressured to do anything in particular. So what I mean is when somebody just sees a live feed of what I'm doing, then they get a lot of information about what I'm doing. But when I'm writing, I can like, in some sense, perfectly narrate what information the other people will receive. And somehow maybe that has something to do with that it feels different talking to a camera than talking to a text document. Yeah, okay. And so like, I was just vaguely now gesturing at some of the advantages I think you could get by doing a camera monologue. And I feel like these are sort of augmenting what you can do with writing things down, like with doing exploratory writing and with doing write-ups that try to communicate well to different people concepts that you have. Like I feel like these all fit together and it feels like that the kind of camera monologue might be a thing that is the 
it's like a good starting point because like the bandwidth is relatively low so it seems good for exploratory things like like roughly talking like for example what i'm talking about right now that's like it would have taken me probably at least five times longer to write all of that down and it's probably it, like it wouldn't i wouldn't have done it because it would have taken too long i think like i would have got distracted oh this is another advantage actually of the camera lock i now realize for some reason it's a lot easier to finish this kind of lo video log than it is to write an article and that's probably just to the nature of it's probably has to do with what is the quality standard and like even the idea of what the thing is i'm producing because right now i'm just like thinking i am i am at the highest level of production sort of where i that, that, but this is supposed to be the cheapest thing I can run, the cheapest methodology in order to make any progress at all in thinking about something. And, and then the quality requirement is like a lot lower. With, the, with like when I would write a post, I might be like, oh, I want to make it really good. Uh, but then I like want to make it so good that like I don't ever publish it because it never hits the quality threshold, which is kind of worse than publishing something mediocre probably yeah so i feel like that's was probably it i feel like i forgot to really take here the notes um that would be like i feel like yeah that that's uh let's let's quickly talk about that one problem that i noticed with the video conversation which i think was probably the main reason why i stopped doing it is that it's a lot harder to like basically forget everything a lot easier and i don't even mean like first of all you can't look at well, you can look at that but looking it up is a lot more costly when you look at look at the video but the second thing is i have noticed that it is a lot more you you, you forget like I, I i ran into a situation where i forgot that i had recorded a particular kind of video that i already like like i was thinking oh wait i could write an article about this seems like kind of good and i like then like a couple of days later, I was like, wait, look at this video. This is like talking about the topic. I forgot that I made that. And it felt like I would not have forgotten that was that an article I had posted on less wrong. So they may, they, I'm not quite sure what it is. It might simply be that when you write an article, you just spend a lot more time on the topic. And like if you spend like 10 times the amount of time on the thing, then you do in the video, like probably actually more than 10 times then it's more likely that you will remember because it's such a big piece in in your memory so there's lots of like occupies a lot of of time in your memory but that's that topic i'll try to use this in the next couple of days um doing the camera thing as the first stage thing or like you know whenever it really feels useful i want to keep in mind that that is a thing that i can do and then use it in whatever situations I feel like it would be useful and then see if it's actually useful and try to use Logseek um, in order to keep track of the conversation that I of, about the monologue, what, what the important points are and then sort of take that as the foundation for doing some further writing, factorizing the problem and I guess I could p pull in a kind of like this framing of like this is the first thing then we do Logseek, then we do Obsidian write-up. Um, I feel like it's a bit more interspersed and you do all of that a bit, a bit and jump around with them. Yeah, but I want to be more aware of these tools and see how much I can get out of them.